Excellent. So good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is great to be with you this morning for the first episode of Tea With Me. So welcome to Tea With Me. Just checking to make sure that you all are seeing me. Yes, we're good. Um, so I don't know what you are drinking this morning, but I have rose hip and hibiscus because I like herb teas. So um, I don't know what you are drinking, but you could probably put it in the chat, you know, so I could see what you're drinking. But we are ready to get started. Just let me get my stuff because I got a little distracted with the life not going the way that was planned. You know, you test and test and you make sure that everything is okay. And then when it's time, you're like, what is going on? But the Holy Spirit is here. We are here. And we are just going to have, uh, you know, a little enjoyable time just talking about the things of God, just being in the presence of God, you know, um, and as I said, you know, we, we grab a cup of whatever we like and, you know, you sip while we equip ourselves with the word of God. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking that this is such a good opportunity for me to try different teas, you know, because I like herbal teas and stuff. So this is a great opportunity to just try a little different tea and stuff. So today's rose hip, I'll see what I'll have on Friday. <laughs> yeah. And you can try that out too, probably different coffees. You know, if you never had chocolate, whatever, whatever, whatever. So today, you know, I want to talk a little bit because I said, you know, I wanted to kick off these episodes with, um, you know, just talking about getting into the presence of God. And, you know, I realized that so many people, they have a problem with their prayer time, with their prayer life. And I feel like these little snippets will help us to just get back to that realness of God, you know, to just get back there. So. I said in Bible study a couple um, a couple of weeks ago, I made mention and I said that, you know, God is happy to see us when we come into his presence, that he's happy to see us, that he's joyous. And, you know, someone said to me, they said, somehow I find that hard to believe. They just couldn't see God being happy to see them, you know, and I realized that people they have so much condemnation. It's like you tell yourself, like, how, why would God be happy to see me? But, you know, when you look in the scriptures, it's just that you see. And, and that's one of the things I want to share with us. If you have your Bible or your device or whatever, let's look at Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. Beautiful scripture. I don't know if you ever came across it before. Yeah, don't know if you ever came across it. And it says here, it says, the Lord thy God, in the midst of thee, he's mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. You know, and when you get, just get the picture of it, that your God, yes, he's mighty. Yes, he's almighty God. But he will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. It says he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. You know, and I looked at it in a, another translation. You know that part that says he will rest in his love? The beautiful thing about it. Hear what it says in the Amplified. It says he will be quiet in his love, making no mention of your past sins. You see, so a lot of the times when we can't see God in this way, it is because we are making mention of our sins. We, you know, sometimes it's not about God forgiving us, it's us forgiving ourselves, you know. And because we don't forgive ourselves, it's difficult for us to just come into his presence and realize that he's happy to see us. So it says he will be quiet in his love, making no mention of your sins. And he will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. I check even another translation. And when you look in the living Bible, hear what it says. It says, he will rejoice over you with great gladness. He is he's glad with great gladness. It says, he will love you and not accuse you. Because guess who is the accuser? We know who the accuser of the brethren is. And we know that that is Satan himself. But the scripture says that he will not accuse us. So he will love us and not accuse us. And then it says, I love how they put this. They said, is that a joyous choir that I hear? Is that a joyous choir I hear? It says, no. It is the Lord himself exalting over you in happy song. 
you know, could you pet your God like that? You know, we have one mode in our minds of how God is. And, and you know, we see him as this God with the big stick. You know, God who is always serious. God who, you know, a judge and so. But the God, he took time to put this in his scriptures so that we will know. And there's another scripture that says that God laughs. <laughs> you know, yes, it says that he laughs at the heathen, right? Because they feel that they could rage against them. But God laughs. He laughs. And we need to get that picture of him. That when we come into his presence, and that's what I want this episode to talk about, that we are welcome. He welcomes us. He's happy to be with us. You know, like when you get together with a good friend, that is how God looks forward to being with us. So it says that he's exalting over us with happy song. So I, I saw it as, you know, sometimes you may be sleeping and, you know, you, you may have prayed before you went to sleep and you are not aware, but God is singing over you. You remember, I don't know if any of you all had a little child, you know, you had a baby. And the baby would be laying down in the crib there. And you are just standing over the crib and just looking into their face as they sleep because it looks so peaceful. Could you imagine Father God just looking in at you, looking over you, singing over you. You, you may, you know, be tossing and turning or whatever and he would sing over you to just comfort you, to relax you so that you get sweet sleep, you know. I want you to get that picture of God because one thing that the Lord has been really stirring in my heart is for us to get back to a place of realness where this relationship with him is real, where who we talk to, that when we talk to him, he's real. It's, it's not just this imaginary God, you know, he's real. And I was hearing a testimony from one a Ukrainian woman, a, a Ukrainian Christian woman and she um you know they're going through a lot i mean she was talking about how they had to leave their house with just the clothes on their backs and, and stuff like that and she was doing this interview with someone from the u.s and she said she said that going through this you know people see her as strong and whatever because her family you know they look up to her and whatever and she said but it is it is a very concerning time and sometimes she can feel the fear and the, the person who was interviewing her, they asked her, um, how do you see God at this time? How do, you, how do you relate to him? And she said, you know what? I trust him like I trust my father, like I trusted my father. Her father passed away last year. And she said when she remembered that when she was eight years old, she was always afraid of the water, you know? And she had stepped out into the water. And as she stepped out, she realized all of a sudden that her feet could not touch the ground. And her father was there and the water was a bit rough. And her father was there and her father was saying, swim to me, swim to me. And she said, she looked at the water and she had the choice of being afraid with the water that she was in or um, swim, trusting him and swimming to him. And she said that she just started to swim swim trusting him keeping her eyes on him and she swam to him and she said when she stretched out her hand and she touched her father's hand she said she will never forget that because she felt all the love all the comfort all the protection of a father and you ever wondered you know i'm, I'm saying this and it, it, it's it's so emotional because you, you ever wonder why God took time to reveal himself as father? And you know, one of these episodes, I want to talk about that. Why he would take time to reveal himself as father? Because he's a good father. And he wants us to see him like that. And he wants that when we come into his presence, that we see that he's happy. Like a father would be happy to see his child. You know, the other day, I was in the kitchen and, you know, I'm doing stuff and, um, my son, my son is, you know, he more to himself, you know, these, these um, young adults, teenagers, young adults. And he, you know, normally he's in his room, he's doing his stuff. And he came downstairs and I was you know, cooking, I can't remember what I was doing, but I was there busying myself in the kitchen. And he stood up there and he was chatting with me and stuff. And then I decided, you know what, I should go and change my clothes. So I sat down a bit and he was talking because he's not a talker. That's the thing. So when he came, it was like, oh, well, this is pleasant. You know, he, he's talking. And I said, you know what, let me go change my clothes. And normally what that would do is he'd be like, well, that would be the cue that he's going to go back into his own space or whatever. But when I went into my room, he came into the room with me. 
and he continued talking. And I closed the bathroom door to change my clothes and stuff. And he sat down outside of the door and he was still talking to me. And I said, you know, it was so delightful for me because what it said to me is that he wanted to be with me. He wanted to talk to me. And this is how the father feels when we want to come and we want to talk to him. And I, you know, I started to picture what it would have been like in the garden with Adam and Eve, you know, um, before they sin. Because the scriptures tell us that God will come in the, in the cool of the day. You know, he will come to meet with them. I'm looking to, to see what scripture I pulled out. Yeah, he would, he would come to meet with them in the cool of the day. And when he would come, they would have fellowship. Obviously, it was something that they got accustomed to, right? But just imagine that Adam and Eve, they were at a place with God. They, they, the, the people that they were at the time, you know, um, they, were, they had the capacity for the presence of God. Because God did not diminish over the years. Eh? He did not get small. He did not get less powerful. You know, so you just imagine the power of God walks into the garden. And there the, it is the power of God walking through the garden. And Adam is able to say, hi, good, good to see you. I'm great, great that you're here because he had the capacity. The presence of God did not floor him. You know, if God comes in all of his presence, no, we out cold. <laughs> <laughs> we out cold. We don't even know um, what else the Lord does because his presence is so, you know, um, potent. But Adam was able to fellowship with God and he was able to talk to God. And I believe he would have asked God things like, you know, he might have commended God like, Lord, I, I love your splendor. I, you know, I just love who you are because you'd wonder what did they talk about? In those times and he would probably say i love your splendor you know he would ask him things about heaven he would uh, he would just talk to god and thank him for 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 giving him the opportunity to, to communicate with him and god will probably be telling adam what he created him for his purpose tell him that you know i want you to go name the animals whatever you name them that's the name that it will be. He would, they probably spoke about Adam at some point. Would have spoken about, you know, I, I noticed that all the animals, you know, they have somebody, but I have nobody. And, you know, God will say, you know, it's not good that you should have nobody. I believe that God did that and, and allowed Adam to start off by himself because he wanted Adam to understand the, the, the loneliness, the, you know, what it is to, to be alone. You know, and he wanted Adam to be able to relate to that. And so that when he gave him somebody, he will understand God's heart and why God needed to have somebody, why he wanted to have somebody, you know. And so it's so beautiful when you think about the whole thing, because I think the, um, God would have told him the desires that he had for him. But but Adam would have also shared with God his own desires, you know. And then what happened now is that sin entered. And when sin entered, just think about the beautiful fellowship that they had. But then sin entered. And if you look at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 7, you could go there quickly with me. Let me take a little sip. Go there quickly with me. Um, and it starts off, it says, and the eyes of them both were opened. Because remember, we know the whole story, so we're not going over the story. But the eyes, their eyes were opened after they ate of the fruit. And you know, remember, that is how they, they realized that they were naked and then they sewed the fig, um, fig leaves and so to make an apron to cover their nakedness. But what it was before that is that they saw with spiritual eyes before. Before they had eyes for God, they could, they could, they could, they could contain him. You know, and there it is, they ate up this fruit and the fall happened. And now their fleshly eyes were open. Their spiritual eyes were not open in the same way that it was before. They lost that ability to just see God, to relate to him, to relate to his realness, you know. And so they, they lost that when their eyes were open. And if you look in verse 8, it says, it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves 
from what? From the presence of God. You see, they, they heard God because they knew when he would come. And I believe, even though it says that they heard God walking, I believe that his entire presence, presence as he came in they knew he was there you know how we know when the presence of God enters a room you know they knew he was there and the moment he came his presence came them and you know what what I believe you know when God met with Moses and we told him that you can't look on my face or else you will die I believe that if Adam and Eve had looked on God if they did not hide themselves they may have died in that moment because they no longer had the capacity for him. And Jesus Christ came to give us back a capacity for God so that when we are in his presence, that we could contain more and more and more for him. So the more that we make room for him, we could contain more of him, you know. Um, but it says that they hid themselves from his presence. And you know, from that time onward, man has been hiding themselves from his presence. We don't want to do that. You know, and what did God say to Adam? He said, God came in and he said, where art thou? Adam, where are you? God wanted to fellowship with him. God wanted to fellowship with them, to come and have their conversations, to have their walks, to have their talks. And here it was, Adam was hiding from him. Adam could not be connected to him. And you know, we, we read that so many times, but now when I hear the words, where art thou? I feel the pain in the heart of God. Because I believe today he's saying that to us as well. Where are you? Where are you? You know, he longed for that fellowship with them. And so he said, where are you, Adam? How is it that you can't connect with me anymore? It's not that God didn't know all that happened, you know, but he wanted to express to Adam that I miss you. I miss our fellowship. I'm going to miss our talks. We had something special. And so the Lord is saying the same thing to us in these days. He's saying, where are you? Because I want to fellowship with you. I want to walk and talk with you. So where are you? And that, I don't want to go on for too long because I want to keep these little snippets because I want us to leave with at least that one thing. That our Father, in all his greatness, he rejoices to be with us. He's happy to see us. And when we hide ourselves from him, because sometimes, you know, you feel like, I have sin, I have whatever, but he's made provision for that. And we're going to talk about that entrance into his presence. He made provision for that. He so wants the fellowship with us that he made provision for that, you know? And so I hope that just this little sharing, this little snippet, I pray that it will stir up something in your heart. I, I don't know why I feel so emotional about just this part because... I just feel like it's God's heart for us to see him. You know, he sees us and he wants us to see him, to see how he loves us, to see how he wants to be near to us, to see how he stretches out his hand to take us when we are in trouble. You know, so I just want to pray a little prayer over us, precious father. Lord, I just want to thank you for this little time of sharing with your people. And oh God, how I pray that we will hear your voice, that this will not just be another program, another thing, but that we will hear your voice, that we will begin to see you, that your realness, that which you have been trying to show us will come through to us and that we will stop hiding from you. I will come to you afresh. In your precious name I ask it, Lord. And I thank you. I bless you. Bless you, Lord. So thank you guys for joining me. I know for some of you all will feel, you all will feel this is short because you have the whole morning. But I know that there are people that just took a little time out of their day to be here. And so looking at some of the comments here, you know, they say thank you. God bless you. God bless you as well. Um, and 
Join me again on Friday. We're going to talk some more about our God, about this relationship. It's been a pleasure being with you. So God bless you all until we meet again. And thank God it's only going to be, it's going to be Friday. So it's not going to be a whole week, right? So God bless you all. Thank you.